This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 380. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in uh, very snowy Beachview, Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to talk tech, get geeky with you and with uh, uh, our friends on the couch. Join us, brave the hills and the slippiness of Pittsburgh tonight. First of all, John Chichilla from Big Bank International, the gadget guru over there joining us. It is slippy out there. You you really were dedicated to I need to be in Studio A this week. I, I was dedicated to that, and I needed to get out to get salt. That mission was not completed. That was a failure, but I made it to the studio. But you made it to the studio. That's good. That's good. And also from from far away of the next hill over of Allentown, <laughs> a fellow co op uh, member owner of uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh, and the man behind Haggerty Media. He's done movies and stuff that we talked on Blood and Leaves. If you want to go check out the old awesome chat we did with you. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming and bra- again braving this incredible weather lately. Yes, uh, I am very excited to be here. Maybe a little sweaty. My adrenaline's finally like dying down from the drive. So it, 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 yeah, just... it really it really got you kind of going. You're really <laughs> worked up for the show now, right? Yeah, I'm definitely like the pizza I had when I got here tasted better than any pizza that I've ever had. Like it, getting it was, out of the car, it's like Survivor pizza. Yeah, Survivor tacos is happening after the show. <laughs> <laughs> the full beach view experience, food wise. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here, and thank you everybody in the chat room. Uh, I, I understand there is a movement for you to bring everybody tacos back in Allentown right now, uh, happening in the chat too. So there you go. Work hard, basement tacos, all you can eat. <laughs> Taco Tuesday party. Uh, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. Please check out everything on AwesomeCast.com. So subscribe to the show on, on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Facebook and YouTube page. And of course, check us out here every Tuesday at live.awesomecast.net at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com. Uh, they're carrying us, of course, Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And our friends at the 405media.com. They're carrying us every, every workday, five days a week. At 9 a.m. Pacific time and noon Eastern, if you want to get your fill of the awesome cast. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. No, that's the wrong show. Patreon.com slash awesome cast, of course. Um, you know, shout out to our supporters, Matt Weller at the five dollar coffee club level, and Mike Fedor at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter, who joined us, of course, at the end of the year show as well. Uh, if you want to show your support and get a shout out too, check out our page again, patreon.com slash awesome cast. So on this cold night, guys, let's uh, uh warm it up with some awesome things of the week. Um Chilla. <laughs> Wants to command his vacuum with his voice. Oh, but I can. I can command my vacuum with my because voice. Because of course you can, right? So, so for Christmas, um, we actually got the the Shark Ion robot. Which, if you're familiar with Roomba, it's it's we're we're a fan of the Shark brand. So we got the Shark um, I Ion robot. Some people call it the iRobot, um, especially my kid. Um, this Shark actually connects to your Wi-Fi. Um, so you can control it with both your phone and Amazon Alexa and Google Home. But I'm not sure. I don't think you can do it with Siri just yet. Um, but so I can say, hey, so-and-so, tell Shark to start cleaning. And you will hear a little ding in the corner of the room. The robot comes out, cleans for 60 minutes puts itself back in the dock Jeez. if if you are in the middle of doing something or you don't want to be tripping over the the, the robot um you can say hey so and so tell shark to send the the vacuum or the cleaner to the the dock 
and it, you'll hear a little ding on the, the, the shark and it will stop kind of where it's at, clean up right around itself and then shuffle off to the dock. Can you um, program commands in? Like you, if you drop something and broke it, expletive, it comes <laughs> and cleans it up. You can tell it to do a spot clean, but I can't figure out. Yeah. I don't think it knows where to go. You can set up. It comes with this. It's almost like a. It reminds me of like a thick that magnet tape where you can like take it in like an adhesive mm -hmm. magnet and tape it in strips. It's almost like that that you can put to to section off rooms and it's not allowed wow. to go past that. Um, I what I am very impressed because who doesn't have enough time in their life to just watch their their robot vacuum clean for sixty minutes? Well, there's nothing good on TV, <laughs> therefore. <laughs> right? But it's really interesting how it does the, these angles it comes out and i don't know how it figures out like the square of the room but it does everything on like a zigzag angular pattern and i'm guessing that's because it's an efficient way to make sure it hits every corner mm -hmm. but then when it figures out where there's like a long wall it literally drives like three inches forward and turns into the wall and then pivots out and drives three inches and turns into the wall. So it's effectively grabbing everything along mm -hmm. the perimeters. Mm -hmm. So like if you have stuff up on the baseboard or anything like that, it's actually kind of pulling it in and then running it over to, to suck it up. So I, I've been pretty impressed with that. I mean, we have two cats, so it picks up all the cat hair. Um, in this weather, people drag salt in the house. It's picking up little crumbs of salt. Obviously, you could, it has a little piece that you pull out it's where all it's like a, i would say the size of a small novel that it can it puts everything in you take that tap it out in your garbage put it back in you're good to go um, obviously if you're cleaning every day um, it's not like that trap is going to fill up a large amount um, what we're interested in seeing as we haven't done it yet is when we do the normal vacuuming, how much does the vacuum actually suck up versus what this is sucked up all week long. Um, so you're telling me that this, this, this is supplemental to um, actual vacuuming that you might do. Oh, nice. I would, I would think that you would still vacuum. Is this like, wait, on is, is this like how I need to wash my dishes before I put it in the dishwasher? I wouldn't say it's that much effort. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how much the normal vacuum picks up because mm -hmm. that will then, make us that figure is out how often well, we're then going to vacuum there for here's, here's a question that i have and when i was out in california they all swear by their roombas and when you watch how the zoom how, how the roomba goes about its business it kind of goes off in a trajectory hits a wall or hits a leg chair or the chair leg and then it pivots and goes but if you were to actually track its track across the room there are large gaps that it's likely missing. So that's what I've noticed is the way when it comes out of the dock, it tends to go into kind of our living room area and it goes on this angle. Mm -hmm. And when it hits the wall, it does like a U-turn and comes back on that angle till it hits something, then pivots and goes back. So it's running these this across like on an angle of the room. And you can actually see, because now we have it running like while we're sleeping at night, because okay. it's not super loud. You can see the tracks in the carpet where and it's running. where it's ran. And they all like they overlap, but it's on this weird, like everything's a giant like X. Like it, but you can see where it's hit everything. Oh, okay. Because like I said, with my aunt and my cousin and like everybody out in California, they, they have it for my family. And it'll go forward. It'll turn 45 degrees, go forward, hit something and turn around. And maybe it'll be a 30 degree angle at that point. And it's just kind of bouncing around. And their small kitchenette area, table legs, chair legs. And it just kind of ping pongs back and forth between those and then goes back out into like the now kitchen area. That was the interesting thing too that I, I was watching after on, on like minute 45 of watching the, <laughs> the, the vacuum do its work, um, it got into the living room and was going around the table. 
And you know how I was telling you when it figures out where a wall is, it'll kind of turn in. Mm-hmm. And then when it hits the wall, it, it'll then kind of turn back out, move a couple inches, turn in. See. When it hit the chair leg, it actually went to like turn in on the next pivot thinking, I think I thought it I think it thought it was going to hit a wall, but it didn't. So it pivoted around the chair leg and then went straight. Okay. And then it got totally stuck under the table for a long time. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting to see what happens. Is it going to find its way out? Is it going to beep and say, like, it's stuck? Like, what's going to happen? And it actually ping-ponged over the entire area where the chairs were. Then it kind of figured out where one of those walls was would have been what it thought were the chair legs. And once it hit one and started to go in, it then left the table from the opposite side. There's there's a game in here. There's a game (laughs) built into this. Like I can imagine taking like different colored, like little poker chips or something and randomly putting them in the room and you're taking bets (laughs) on which one it's going to get first. Right. Or last. We we also, we also, so, so Steve's in here of our uh, uh, sister podcast, uh, bold sports. Uh, but are your cats afraid of it? Try to ride it, or that's just worry worry with his. The, the one cat, the one cat runs and just hides behind the couch, which that cat hides. It's what he uh, does. Uh, well, yeah. It's, 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 the, the other one like follows it around, doesn't jump on it. It's just more inquisitive, mm-hmm. but doesn't really. Is a quasi aloof, but non combative. Doesn't try to ride it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, if they get more used to it, I don't know. And would I even know if they wrote it? Because now we're... we're now, <laughs> I don't know. You're watching it all the time. Well, but I'm not... Like, now that we're running it at night, like, the first time we ran it, like, I watched it a lot. But mm-hmm. now it's just kind of... Now it's just something that exists in your house. Yeah. You're just now it just does the... You, you does normal, it have a name? You've normalized did, it. Yes, have you, you named it? it? No, we, we didn't name it. Uh, Yet. 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 Trial period. <laughs> But Would, but I overall I am extremely extremely happy. Yeah. Brandon wants to know if it goes under the bed. We don't have a bed on our entry level. Mm. So here's the interesting thing: is this they they obviously expect you to buy more than one because mm-hmm. when you when you because um, it learns the floor set it up right it it asks you what you want to call it and yeah. I just called it entry level okay it's on the entry level of the house. Um, it's but, like it's like echoes. It should be in every yes, every floor. But if, if this goes well, when the basement's finished, we'll definitely probably get one for the basement. And You've I'll been really playing up this basement. I'll think, I'll, for a while. I'll I'll think about I'll think about getting one for the upstairs. Jeez, the upstairs a little. So the the one thing that we do now is at night before we go to bed, we make sure that we clean up all of the toys and everything mm-hmm. that's all over the floor. Hmm. Um. And. The upstairs, I mean, there's a T-shirt here. There's this, that, and the other thing mm-hmm. everywhere. Christopher's room is a trap um, with toys and everything. So I probably wouldn't want to take the time to clean up the floors every night in the upstairs. Or I would use that tape and, like, at least section off his room. <laughs> um, Caution the room. no zone. Caution Roomba's tape. <laughs> Radioactive yeah. zone. So, so... But for the basement, I I, I figure it'll be a mm-hmm. nice nicer, cleaner area. So awesome. getting it for down there. Well, when you're done uh, watching your Roomba, I, I I kind of rediscovered. Now I've I've seen this app floating around for a while, and my awesome thing of the week is uh, Pluto TV. And you go know, Pluto Pluto TV to check this out, right? And uh, it's one of those, you know, it's kind of one of those, oh, what, you know, what is this free TV? Is it really actually free? You know, what's what's going on with this? They have an app for basically every platform. You got a TV device, of course, Samsung TVs, Vizio TVs, uh, all your consoles and everything. Um, I was surprised to see, I, I think there's very obvious that it's, you know, Nerdist, IGN, a lot of online stuff, Fight Network, there's a food TV, like the stuff you find apps for on your Roku and your and your Apple TV. Or right? podcasts. Or podcasts, right? Or on, or on uh, uh, your Fire TV. Um, but it also still has like serious stuff. Like there is CNBC, there is Sky News, there is um, the CBS News that has the online channel that that I I, I watch uh, sometimes with the app as well, right? How do you pronounce the TYT network? Uh, I don't know. Okay. What, what is TYT? It looks like tit to me. Tight. 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 So let's go tight. Let's go <laughs> tight for that. Like tie T Y. Sure, 
Sure, but it's a news channel apparently. Um, but but so it, it's something I, I I came across. I forget how I ended up over here, um, but I've been um, checking it out because they have an Impact Wrestling channel, which I heard these guys are also going to be on Twitch TV, which is a whole other thing that can be discussed as well. Um, but but I hopped in there uh, over the weekend and even yesterday. And it has just like, you know, uh, Impact is, is TNA Wrestling has, you know, been around for something like 15 years at this point. Um, they have TV on like Pop TV, which I don't even know if anybody has that anymore. Uh, so I haven't watched it for a while. And there's a lot of people that we know from the wrestling world that are a part of it these days. So it'd be nice to kind of catch up. And I hopped over there and it's just playing like classics. Like right now they're doing um some some uh tna epic stuff which is you know stuff like old feuds and everything they were playing just old episodes in the middle of the day they were playing their uh uh one night only uh pay-per-views over the weekend uh so it's been kind of cool to just put it on you know much like i love that you know wwe network you can just turn it on something wrestling is happening right and again this is something of a different flavor because god i can't like total it has total divas the reality show on e and that's like the cops of the network that is basically whenever you actually want to watch that's the thing that's on instead of wrestling <laughs> um so you know instead of, you know the thing you actually want to turn into the re- tune into the wrestling channel for uh so it's kind of nice to just drop in there you know i i subscribe to things like new japan and and the the wwe network and 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 uh fight tv uh has a lot of the shows like ring of water some other um lesser known wrestling promotions as well but it's always just nice especially when you're kind of working at something just to put something on right so is this is this running like a streaming broadcast that you have to tune in at that time yes. to see that okay and then yes. are they also throwing ads in like i think they do but i think my ad blocker is fussing with that <laughs> to be quite honest i have not watched it on um a device okay. i've watched it in browser for the most part so far and yeah if you look at the video here uh for you guys that are on video yeah you have the video going and we can go full screen we can kick to um you know a, a chromecast or something but there's also this channel guide here and it's it's pretty you know pretty well set up and there's there's actually some interesting stuff in here like there's there's little shop of horrors from 1960 playing somewhere um there's like some horror channels there's the new stuff is uh, all, all kind of bunched together so uh fight tv which is a canadian channel that does like everything from boxing to mma uh who i think the same company now owns impact wrestling so that makes sense there so there's a mystery science theater station station which when i tuned in i want to point out what had the old host I'm only familiar with the sci-fi channel uh, era of Mystery Science Theater, so it's kind of cool to see, you know, which I'm not sure if these older ones are even on Netflix hmm. uh, when they have their collections as well. So it's, uh, there's, a, is that, what is this? Oh. Why are there oh, different wait, wait. channel even more, Even more, guys, and, and too bad Katie isn't here for this, there's a Cats 24-7. Oh, see, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> see, this is this is what it's, happens when the ad You're taking a cat nap right now. And apparently it is. Yeah. By the way, I've never seen the ad block counter just it, it's like in the thousands it's about to hit 2000 and it's going higher so i think that's something happening onion tv is another thing that that uh they have it's anime tv ign there is a minecraft tv because you know you want minecraft tv <laughs> but they have world i saw they have world poker poker tour and that's actually something that i find it fun to watch people play poker mm-hmm. so i i would actually and i'm 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 probably going to download this on my Samsung TV and my Apple TV. And have, have you seen what you numerous. would call more like, um, I don't know, I guess content generated by other than broadcast, like, you know, let's say awesome cast. Is there a show? I wonder if you like can get a channel. Or, yeah. It, it, it may be. Can what you is, what, apply to be Can I apply there? to it? And we can just put like the old channels on. I've been looking for something to do like, because I love how this week in tech does like a channel of like, Hey, here's all the stuff from the week and we go live on this. And, and, and there's that, but you need like, if you're doing it independently, like we need a whole other wirecast computer and, and, and that's all, you know, all, all, always going and multiple streams and that kind of idea. Um, maybe there is a mechanism that you could do something through a service like this, I, but I don't know how accessible it, it, it doesn't have, I mean, it's got hundreds of channels. Well, maybe not hundreds. It's kind of skips up to 900, but it even has like the music channels. Like if you had like satellite, right. Where it, it's just like, you're going to listen to, you know, uh, red cup radio apparently. Right. Uh, so and now, you can, you can become a cart content partner. There's you a, can, there's a, uh, noise. There's a link on the, their front page. So we'll have to take a look at that. So that might be an option. Um, so that's, that's me making a note of this so I can look into it. <laughs> <laughs> making a note here. 
So there's uh, distribution partnerships, content partnerships, and advertising partnerships. Well, there you go. They'll be worth checking out for uh, for all sides. And, and just as a good alternative, I actually hit, I actually kicked it to my mom because I think we talked about it here before about how she's looking to just like cancel her cable, go direct TV. I kind of want to be like, this may solve most of your content watching problems because I don't think there's anything particular other than maybe the Hallmark Channel. Also weird that I find out that my mother is watching uh, Heartland, which is this kind of horse show um not horses talking like it's like around like, like mr horse raising no no not like mr ed <laughs> but it's canadian so like the new episodes don't show up on hallmark until like much much later so she's been like kind of watching it on youtube quote unquote so i'm like i'm like i'm like you realize you're not entirely watching that illegal way mom <laughs> so it's just interesting that it's become she's like i mean it's not hard to find stuff like that right and i don't know maybe uh, the Heartland uh, owners are not as on top of things, maybe. I'm surprised at how many things I've seen Christer, Christopher stumble upon on YouTube that is either full, large sections of movies mm-hmm. or the entire TV show or whatnot. And you can tell, like, they've tried to get around... Like it's the, reversed and it's like 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 the colors are off in. by like yeah like like all the reds <laughs> yeah. are now purple yeah yeah there's certain frequencies that you can uh, render like re-render it with mm-hmm. that are supposed to get around the copyrights like things well, like it's that. working oh yeah well, some <laughs> shows look better in black and white oh yeah like if you take just on your TV and go you know desaturate and watch like Daredevil on Netflix mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. kind of a film noir looking show there was yeah. one there was one well we, we around Christmas we were just looking through. And it had a lot of the Christmas classics, like Charlie Brown, The Grinch. But it was like cl- this classic TV thing. And it was truncated down. And they had like an old school TV around it. So it was like, <laughs> it's like the, it was at actual resolution within. And then you play it on the big, like, yeah, our big Panasonic TV here, right? And it looked, it was awesome. Because yeah. it felt very old school. It felt right. All I was missing was like the commercials from the 80s from like I felt like I was watching my old like VHS tapes because you know <laughs> you recorded Charlie Brown that one year but then a part of your memory muscle memory of that is whatever like McDonald's commercial it was like in 1984 when you recorded it is you know and that's that's kind of built in nice but and Charlie Brown's one they never remastered so it's like really pixel- really it's really pixelated like even, and it's on blu-ray yeah <laughs> You're saying it's just not even. Now, I, I, we, we picked up a DVD once of Never Ending Story, like the two pack of the first two. And like, I'm watching this and I'm like, is that hair on the film? Like, they didn't even, like, they just took <laughs> like a straight, you know, copy of the, of whatever film they had of it. And that was it. Here you go. It's on DVD. Congratulations. So, all right, uh, Ryan, speaking of making stuff, uh, what is uh, your awesome thing of the week? Um, so, I've been able to do what I do uh, as a video producer and uh, filmmaker when I'm able uh, through the use of these cameras that different companies like Sony and Panasonic are making where uh, we're being recorded on these dedicated cameras that are straight up video. But uh, this Panasonic GH5S. So Panasonic has made these cameras that are little still cameras but they've always one-upped other companies in the video department. Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, the two models back, the GH4 was one of the first ones to do 4K in this little handheld camera package that was under $2,000, which, you know, I mean, your iPhone does 4K now and all of that, but uh, as far as a filmmaking tool goes, and even broadcasts and uh, vloggers, these are like very popular cameras. Mm Mm-hmm. And so this, and, and, and it has the bigger sensor as opposed to what your iPhone has, which is the big difference. Is is the size of that sensor to capture all that light, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're they're pioneering the sensor tech that uh, you're able to do things with shallow depth of field. You're able to do things in uh, low light and actually have it come out and look good. But uh, I guess the big deal with this GH5S is the low light capability. So um they're using these a lot of times you'll you'll see these show up in movies like even as far back as the original avengers Mm -hmm. they were using little canon dslr cameras and mounting them you know because they're cheaper for a film set for them to like run it over with a train (laughs) you know for somebody (laughs) like me i would probably cry if that happened but Mm -hmm. uh so yeah just trying to find new applications for them so they'll just kind of you know see what the market demand is put this thing out into the wild and then see what people do with it Mm mm-hmm 
So uh, the other thing with these is I mentioned vloggers. Uh, you know, flip screen's not a huge deal, but uh, the model that I actually have, the GH5, has a flip screen. And then as you're holding it, rather than it looking like you're on a boat, it has some uh, image stabilization built into the camera that actually moves the sensor around to compensate uh, for me, you know, moving around like an idiot. So Right, because you, you have a lot of that same effect you do on a, on a cell phone, right, with these. That's yes. why I've always seen... <clears throat> there's a few groups that I see that film pro wrestling with this and they're running around the ring and following people with it. And you get that effect with it. Like you would a cell phone. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just kind of, it's a, at a $2,500 price point, you're getting a camera that does, you know, all these, all these cinematic things that would have cost you, you know, $50,000 maybe as little as 10 years ago. Right, right, right. So I guess it's kind of that enabling thing that opens up the accessibility of something and just seeing what people are going to do with it. Um, so I don't know. It's still I'm, pricey. Still, I mean, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not exactly a hobbyist camera no, at that level. <laughs> no, for sure. No, and it, it's the kind of thing too, it's funny, uh, I, I don't really get this that much anymore, but I know when people were first using some of these cameras, uh, people didn't know they shot video, you know, so if you went into a concert, they would say, oh, you're just taking photos, you know, whatever, go on, not knowing that you could do video <laughs> um, or even nice. just, you know, doing client work, like having a smaller camera. Uh, you know, I guess people people are questioning your professionalism. Even. Yeah, but, I had that problem. That's but now it's was... kind of uh, my, my significant other uh, actually works for WPXI and does digital content online. Mm -hmm. And she uses her iPhone for a lot of content. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess, guess for me, it's just kind of mind-blowing. Every year something comes mm -hmm. out that just... But I want to point out, when, when, when you, you roll do. into a, a set, though... I've seen your setup. It's not just the camera. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's everything is attached to that camera. And <laughs> I think that helps the, that, well, that professional impression as well. Well, and what I appreciate, and functional, my, my back appreciates it, right? Not having to oh, carry yeah. as much oh, equipment. Yeah. I mean, you're arriving on the job and you have like your full setup with you. Uh, it's it's just crazy. I mean, the fact that we're able to do the live stream with this amount of equipment mm -hmm. too is mm -hmm. I the mean, same kind of thing. Notice if you don't ever see in the background here, uh, the big cameras are now here in the studio and it's the Canon Vixies that we're taking on the sets because again, it's easier to, um, you know, uh, be aware, especially in some of the situations, you know, where I have like cars zooming by me, you know, with that kind of setup, than that big setup that we had been doing. Well, and I think the other nice thing about it from your professional standpoint, you do video for a couple of wrestling like local pro wrestling promotions. Right, right. And it's a lot easier to see around those smaller cameras at ringside than mm -hmm. it is trying to see around a body and a large camera at ringside. And it, I still see some of them, like like Ring of Honors, like they're still using the big shoulder ones, but they're, they're shooting directly for television, of course. So... Um, but it's always interesting. I always, I always joke with uh, other camera guys that I'm going to get those for them, like the big, sh you know, shoulder rig, you know, once and and the steady cams, like they have a WWE going up the ramp and all that kind of stuff. So they would die out there. <laughs> yeah. Now, is is it one of those things? Like I know Canon, usually when they come out with the next model, they keep the old model around at a at a pretty steep discount. Is it one of those things where it would be worth going back a rev to save a thousand dollars, or is it? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it all depends on what your goals are. Uh, you know, if you are doing something that's destined for the internet, like blogging or something like that, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, and the big difference is like, I have the GH5 model, which they're kind of like, um, I don't know, sister models more or less, because one is meant for higher end. And then one, it does have the image stabilization built into it, which actually I, I prefer. I don't think I would get the new one and use it as much because, once again, you know, that image stabilization means I don't have to bring a tripod. So there's less stuff to carry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I mean, this is the, the latest one that has come out, which is why I brought it up. But I think in general, these things have come so far so fast that it just enables you to not just to do those things, but the accessibility of having less, less equipment and being able just to carry a camera versus having as much support equipment too makes it more likely that you're going to do it mm -hmm. excellent excellent so go check that out again that is the panasonic lumix dghs i'm sorry gh5s if you want to check that out 
All right. I want to give a shout out to our good friends here. Speaking of awesome things, we were talking a little bit about the Taco Tuesday. But of course, in our taste to beat you, supporting the show here, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza is Slice on Broadway right here up the tracks here in Beachview in uh, the, our, the neighborhood as well as in uh, Carnegie, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates and East Liberty. Uh, thank you so much for those guys for supporting the show and, and being open in all the snowiness here tonight. I know they had some other stuff going on. Also, I want to give a shout out to our friends uh, coming up. Uh, make note, mark your calendars for May 12th of this year uh, because the Millville Music Festival is going to be going on. I know we had a Sidekick Media stage uh, going on last year for it, and I believe that is going to return as well, right? Yes, it uh, is. So uh, check them out, millvillemusic.org. Uh, if you are a band or know a band that should be a part of this, please, uh, uh, submissions are open and right there on the page. You can check out some scenes from last year's event, which was a huge, huge event for the, the town of Millvale, uh, right outside, right outside the uh, city of Pittsburgh limits, right across the river from Lawrenceville, actually. So not far for you guys here in the Pittsburgh area and definitely recommend uh, checking that out. So with that, um, let's get into some uh, um, submitted things uh, that were going on. First of all, <laughs> this was interesting. Uh, this was submitted by, let me make sure I get these straight, our friend Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh uh, submitted the Colgate Smart Electronic Toothbrush E1 with Artificial Intelligence <laughs> that uses, and this is where you'll be interested, Chilla, Research Kit. Huh. Have you looked at this, Chilla? I have not. How, should I buy one? <laughs> you, probably for your house, since you're you know watching your... Even my you, toothbrush is smart. You, you can you can <laughs> you brush your teeth while you're um watching that uh watching your Roomba. That's sixty minutes of teeth brushing. Never mind what the cat's doing with the <laughs> shark. Like what is the smart toothbrush doing with the voice activated smart vacuum that <laughs> you don't know about? Oh no. What happens when you're not there? Well that's okay, you got your nest camera that that'll that'll get all that, right? So um it's interesting. It's, so it's it's an exclusive at Apple.com and select Apple stores. So I, I'm just I'm in, what kind of reporting do you get? And I'm not familiar enough with Research Kit because I don't have any apps that that I mm -hmm. think will leverage it. Do you get like reporting? Does it add it into Health Kit? So uh, I think when you when you're talking Research Kit, like it, it, and again, I think you need to have the app. It's it's like an extension of Health Kit, right? Um, because it was things like the um, like the um, Sorry, grabbing a power cord from my laptop because I forgot to grab it. Uh, you know, it, it, like um, the heart, you know, heart researches and everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where you have to kind of opt in. So it, it probably has something additional to that. And this is a, by the way, this is a hundred dollar toothbrush. So but most, most electric are, are pretty toothbrushes expensive. are pretty expensive. So, and I can't, it looks like it. I'm guessing the. The brush part is replaceable. It looks it looks like that would pivot off. So you could buy this and then just get replacement brush tips. Let's see. I would guess. Hundred dollars is not a lot for real time sensors and artificial intelligence algorithms to detect brushing effectiveness in sixteen zones of the. <laughs> That's I right. did not know my mouth had sixteen zones. Yeah. That's fantastic. So if you really you you need to, and also then you can also I mean this data I imagine you can now when you go to your dentist because I've heard hear a lot of this happening and people with heart sensors and, and and everything like that saying hey yeah here's my data for the last you know six months since I you know, mm. I was here and that actually like the doctors are starting to expect that now. Uh, to a certain or are recommending that that you get something and so they can have an idea of what your heart is doing what your exercise is doing uh, what your sleep patterns are right because that gives a broader picture why wouldn't the dentist is a doctor too why wouldn't they want to see okay exactly what are you doing you're saying you're flossing you're saying you're doing this <laughs> let's see if you're actually doing this as well right catch you in your lives Blue bluetooth I, I can already see uh bluetooth dental floss <laughs> yeah how's that work right um it, it, there's also going to be a 3d brushing coach to create a custom oral care routine for the user while encouraging better brushing habits and that's the thing i mean much like driving a car you don't refresh those skills too often right it is whatever you remember when you're teaching you to, to brush your teeth when you were five right 
And some of us don't retain those skills, so it might be a good thing. But then again, if you're at the point you're dropping $100 for your oral care, you probably are already thinking about those things and making sure you're doing it right to a certain extent. Uh, but it, it's interesting. It, again, AI is going into everything, right? Uh, as we see from uh, CES the last week or so. It's interesting because I, I don't know if you noticed there was a link to like the, the same company built a kid's version, the Magic Toothbrush. Um, the the kids version is one hundred and forty nine dollars, <laughs> but it does it does it has an AR game that goes along with it. So I'm guessing that's where some of the cost comes in. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm super interested in this. Right. Well, another another case of technology that maybe isn't going so well. There's a town in New Jersey that's going to find non residents for driving through their town. <clears throat> Now, this may be something that uh, maybe maybe the residents of Beachview would like to see as well, since we get a lot of cutover traffic here between a couple of main drags here in Pittsburgh, right? But apparently this town, um, oh, I've caught, missed the name of it so you guys can avoid it, of course. Uh, so it's Leona, New Jersey, which sits uh, west of New York City and near the entrance of the George Washington Bridge. That's what I got stuck on the first time I went to Manhattan, actually. Um, you know, leading to Manhattan in the Bronx. Uh, so since way things like ways, I know I use it here in the city, especially rush hour, just to get around some traffic and, and cut across things, right? Because it's so effective, it's pushing higher levels of traffic through their small town. So they are now, <laughs> apparently they, they passed the law that they're going to find anybody between the rush hours of uh, 6 to 10 a.m. and 4 to 9 p.m. Long rush hours, of course, New York City. Uh, they they will find them for driving non residents for driving through their town as a result of the higher traffic that things GPSs like Waze have, have brought them. See, I'm I'm looking at that and going, this isn't a nuisance. This is a business opportunity. Uh, is that <laughs> I'm wondering why why wouldn't they why wouldn't they put in like instead of finding people, just put in like a toll booth, some drive to enter the town. Yeah. I, I don't know. Can you do that on the level of a city, of a town? But how are they going to find people? Are they going to pull every car over and check its ID? Well, okay, if there's commuters, I guess everybody's already going to have Jersey plates. So there's that. Unless they're from Pennsylvania, maybe they're passing through New Jersey to get to New York City. I can imagine there's commuters doing that. Um, Out-of-towners, anything like that. Uh, uh, maybe people have New York plates and they're going the opposite way. So really, um, also how small the town is it? Is, is there... You know, maybe, maybe they're just going to issue <laughs> stickers for residents of the town to put on your license yeah, they plate. They just have a dude named Frank that just knows everybody, <laughs> right? He gets the notepad, the official notepad. There it is. There it is. Um, but, I, but I feel like you could you could make the process with um, like easy pass, right? Where like you pass through an electronic toll booth. Mm-hmm. If you don't have an easy pass, it snaps picture your license and you get a well, bill on the mail. Yeah, yeah, the the the, the, the toll the toll tag thing. Yeah, that's happening or now. or if you're a resident, it knows if you're a resident, it knows that you're a resident and it doesn't deduct from your easy pass. Mm-hmm. And if you're a non-resident, you get dinged, whatever the fee is. What was the cost of a system like that too? But yeah, I don't know. I would think I think I would think it would be easier than pulling over every car or mm-hmm. distributing stickers. I feel bad for the people that live on just the other side of that town that are going <laughs> to pass through the town anyways. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, in, in There's going to be a black market for the license plate stickers. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I don't know. At a certain point, if I'm a business owner that you know I'm a convenience store or something, I'd be pissed that you're like, running traffic away from me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, but but still, it's, it's kind of interesting to see that kind of reaction from. Uh, as technology and GPSs get better, right? So, all right. Uh, wanna, hey, I want to give a shout out to, we're all about shout outs this week. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Bull Pittsburgh. Uh, if you're kind of, you know, we're very Pittsburgh centric on this podcast while we're talking about tech of the world, of course. Uh, but if you're visiting the area or, uh, you just look for something fun to do this weekend, please check out our friends at bold Pittsburgh at boldpgh.com. Uh, there's podcasts here on the network, uh, bold nights out as well as bold sports through the net, through them over there. Uh, they've got the 411 on 412 activities. That's a nice tag line there. Uh, from a night to the theater to, uh, where you grab dinner and drinks with friends. Uh, you, you, they got you covered over there. So I know I'm not really good on the uh, on the late night weekend. Um, I, I just end up at wrestling shows is my my purview. But uh, 
go check them out. They, they know all that stuff. Uh, so check it out, boldpgation.com. All right. I, we, we need to touch on, um, Ryan, I saw this video earlier today. And you got to tell me about the bath, bathtub drone. Oh, that one. Okay. The flying bathtub drone is the most re- amazing thing that I've seen. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I saw this uh, maybe on YouTube or something first where the guy was, they were just kind of testing this thing and it was very scientific looking. They were weighing out ballast to make sure it could support his weight and stuff. But the actual video that is on the Nerdist website is basically showing this story of a guy commuting to the bakery in his uh, <laughs> bathtub drone in Germany because, you know, that's that's what you got to do if you want to get the baked goods, you know, first thing in the morning before everybody else, I guess. Think of the time you could save if you showered on the way to work. And if there, happen- <laughs> <laughs> and if there happens to be a tornado, you're completely safe. Yes, yeah. And like if you're, you know, in Leonia, New Jersey and you just want to get around traffic because it's backed up during rush hour, you just get in the bathtub. It's great. <laughs> Went to the bakery. It's great. <laughs> um, so this is a real thing. Uh it actually will support the weight. And uh if you kind of read through the article, they they show that the video, of course, is poking fun at him actually being able to fly from his house to the bakery. It won't go that far. Uh, but this is something that Somebody built and actually flies without them, uh, you know, becoming decapitated. It's great. That's by this posted with, by the real life guys on uh, what was it Instagram? It looks like as well. Uh, so <laughs> I love these things. It, it's like there's there's a similar video where somebody made the hover bike, where it was like you know kind of fans on the front and the and the back of it, mm. you know, propeller fan kind of things, and they were trying to figure out like you know, that balance, right? And how to steer and like, well, we got it going, but we can't go anywhere but straight or up, right? And seeing that kind of development over time. So um, and now that we have the ability to make things fly, <laughs> I love the hacker community right now. <laughs> so uh, there's, this is great. There's a seat in it. It's, um, I don't know about safety features though. Yeah, I mean, he's got a helmet. He's He's good. He's solid. He's got that little foam pad on the bottom, <laughs> <laughs> crash pad. Yeah, you know, you know, he's got a yeah. He does have a helmet, and then the GoPro, of course, the obligatory. Um, is there a rudder on the back? Is that how you spe- steer this thing? No, no, that's not. It's just it's just completely with about six propellers. I love I love the whole thing's a dream sequence in the video. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, of course. Oh boy, go check that out. It's over at the Nerdist. Flying bathtub drone is probably going to be a safe. Uh, uh, google search for you there all right uh from there uh shilla tell me uh, so what what is up with open banking Uh, you know you're you're involved with big bank international so so this was an interesting thing that caught my eye i think it was published yesterday two days ago Mm the 15th yesterday um so and i wasn't aware of this in the eu the european union and the uk there's actually laws that state that banks are legally required to allow consumers to use their choice of apps to access their accounts. Really? So when you think about the U.S., right? We, whoever you bank with, you have their mobile app, and that's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. use. It's, to, it's to Bank do of your America, thing. it's Citizens, yeah. it's 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 whoever, whoever right? you bank with. Now, certain banks have obviously agreements. I think the, the article goes into Chase Partners with Intuit. Um, Wells Fargo with with zero and Finicity, and we've we've covered apps. I think um, I can't remember who it was. Did an app where it kind of deposited like the the it rounded up and put the spare change in in a different savings account. Hmm. Um, but you had like the the app kind of had to scrape the bank website and do a bunch of strange things to make that all work. Um, this actually allows kind of direct access to these applications. Um, and it really takes, to me, banking to the next level because now not only do you have the banks competing for their services, but then you have these apps that can then compete to say, "Hey, we're gonna let you, we're gonna let you round up your money, and we're gonna put it in different investments, and we're gonna take mm-hmm. X off the top." Like, like we'll, things like Mint right now, yeah, right? Like, yeah. like Mint's a big one for doing that. Um, to me, this really opens up the playing field from a number of app developers and a number of fintech companies to really mm-hmm. take that to the next level. Like, like I said, in it's in the EU and UK. It's a requirement that the banks provide 
access for for those apps. I'm sure this this something will it come to the U.S. Um, there's no law like that today. Um, I would be interested in not even if there was necessarily a law, but banks taking this to that kind of next level. And I think it's kind of like on, having on its own. I don't know because like you know, there's certain banks um, that you know have a lot of those features that that break down what you have, and you're able to do like you know the virtual wallets and things like that, right? But then there are some, there are plenty of banks that are still way way behind the <laughs> curve. Like my bank doesn't even have Apple Pay yet, right? And it's a pretty large bank. It's mm-hmm. one that has commercials on TV. It's not like some regional thing, right? And, uh, you know, so so I think if this became wide open, I don't think it's going to be a law. It's not going to be a law. Mm-hmm. You know, not, not, not with our structure these days. Um, but it could be, would the bigger banks want to relieve that control to something like this? Well, and that's what I'm curious about. So your money is still, you know, technically in the bank, right? The mm-hmm. bank that you, is your home bank. So what happens when there is some kind of, uh, you know, breach of your information on one of these apps? Who's responsible? So the yeah. bank, so the, the way that, the, that this article was explaining it, in the UK, the bank is responsible. Oh, and the wow. apps the apps have to have... And it's almost like the when you load an app and it's like this wants to use your microphone, the apps have to you have to approve the app for read only access and then also like Mm -hmm. move money access. So you could Mm -hmm. say, I just want you to be able to read what read my account and give me recommendations. So like when you sign up for Facebook, you 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 do that thing or or I want it to be able to not only read what's in my bank account, but then move money around on my behalf. I wonder, is there an additional layer of benefits to either the app or the bank with like data? I mean, the bank would already know your spending habits, but perhaps Mm -hmm. the app learning your spending habits. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where I think like the, like Intuit has some stuff. I think they, they make Quicken and a couple other products. Like they, they have that capability where it can look at your spending habits and say, "Hey, did you know that if you stop going to Starbucks every day, you could save eight, you could <laughs> mm-hmm. save eighteen hundred dollars a year." Um, it's it's kind of like those campaigns, like feed the pig, you yes. know, that, that that do stuff like that. So, so hey, if you I, stop going to the taco stand every day, you save like a ton of money, right? You'd be yeah. so sad, <laughs> but you'll be so not full of tacos. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing in the screen capture that they showed from this this open banking app in the UK was. It takes that into account and it actually says like you have $12 left today for coffee and cake and you have $278 left on your holiday budget and you have $430 left with your fun fun money. Mm -hmm. So like it it can tell you like how much money you have left for certain things. So it puts all that budget together. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll, I'm guessing it tries to auto budget that out. But also it's, but it's still sitting in one bank account. Yeah. Difference between that and integrations such as, like I know PNC does with the PNC Wallet. Other than the fact that PNC Wallet is simply for PNC, it's versus just for PNC. Open for other things. This could be open for other things. So when you, to me, when you think about that, I think it. I, you know me, I'm big on competition. So mm. I like, I don't want there just to be Apple, right? I want there to be Apple and 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 like or whatever Google Quicken does or yeah. and whatever. To me, this opens up that competition. And really makes everyone try to push forward. And mm-hmm. hey, Bank X Y Z, we're cooler than than all the app stores. So come at, so come bank with us. Or if you're an app developer, it gives you the ability to say, hey, we're going to charge four dollars a month for this app because mm-hmm. you can now do subscriptions in the app stores, mm-hmm. and maybe that's worth it. Maybe maybe the return on investment for that. Is for the people, they could say, oh, look, I, I'm averaging saving 50 bucks a month by using this app. I don't mind spending the four dollars and netting. Well, and as a, as a you know, small business entrepreneur, like, you know, you don't need to deal with a physical bank as much anyways. But what do you need the app to do for you to interact with your customers? You know, you're doing online sales, you're mm-hmm. purchasing things, whatever. Like, what do you need that app to do that your bank app currently doesn't do? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. absolutely awesome well ryan i i got one more here um for you that, that you brought to the table tell us about the road movie 
<laughs> oh god, this is this is good. So I I just saw this today. Uh, so everybody's probably seen um, a lot of. Uh, I mean, in the U.S. people do have dash cams, but uh, mm-hmm. apparently in Russia, and I, I know I've seen a lot of these, uh, like the daily fail type videos or whatever. Uh, a lot of Russians have dash cams on their cars. Uh, so apparently, there's this documentary called The Road Movie that's been compiled. I literally just watched the trailer for it today that is meant to kind of encapsulate there and they have a, a line in there about Russia being the uh the wild east uh with these <laughs> and, you know these road cams kind of proving that with everything from people walking naked down the side of the road to this wonderful woman who's pumping gas and her car is lighting on fire uh so yeah but it's it's kind of showing that you know I mean a dash cam is there to capture accidents and prove who done it but these are all the things that are outside of that and in, in that <laughs> that these dash cams are catching. So it's kind of oh, like if you this is a time to be on the video. not so secret lives of Russian drivers and any anybody and anything else that is on or off. The road. It's so scary because this is real stuff. <laughs> and we were seeing crashes. We just saw somebody go off a bridge into a river. It's been <laughs> There's this guy with a sledgehammer that look he looks like he's just there to adjust your tires. I'm pretty sure that's all he was in a bear he was chasing a bear. <laughs> So I don't know if there's interviews. I, it may just be 90 minutes of streaming dash can footage for all I know at this <laughs> point, but I'm intrigued. Oh, boy. What? It, re- it reminds me of that first person movie with the shooter, uh, something. Henry oh, uh, or... uh, Hardcore Henry. Henry. I watched that in a theater. It was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like imagine watching this dash cam movie on a VR headset or something. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely, you learn a lot of Russian. That'd be swear scary. Words. You you probably would. Um, and related to that, I, I, it was it was interesting, and I wanted to bring it in here, but I actually haven't even with all those crazy weather and this is exactly the time if I was driving, I should have it. Um, I was going around to something at, at, at Walmart the other day, and I, I looked, and it was there was a, a there were dash cams. And they were nine dollars on clearance. I'm like, holy crap! Um, and I, di- I didn't, I couldn't find the exact one, but I, uh, I did. F- hold on, I found a. Fam- oh, hold on, lost my link. Lost my link. Even your one in here is only twelve ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, like the one in here that looks exactly like the one there. If you go to Walmart.com. And you probably Amazon's probably exactly the same way. And you just you just turn in dash cams again. They're like thirteen bucks to get one. It's probably not going to be great. It has a screen on it. It came with oh, wow. a it came with a four gig SD card. I'm like, this can't work, right? <laughs> it can't. And as it is, I, I love. I, so I was driving left the other day, and somebody was like. Like, because I put a GoPro and it's 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 you know up above the the mirror and it's on you know it's so if some drunks do something weird, one I have it for YouTube and two mostly for safety right to kind of discourage anything <laughs> happening so I can prove yeah that guy completely sneezed on the back of my head or th- threw up in my car or something like that right so it's for a safety and for you know you know protection. So I'm like, well, I need one for the other side because like the time when I almost got run off the road a couple months ago and none of my insurance companies did anything about it, right? If I had that video, I probably would have had a little bit more to send them to say, hey, look, freaking go after this guy, right? Um, Because I didn't realize until too late that there was damage to my car. Uh, So it seems like it makes sense, I think, for safety. And it's only like 10, 15 bucks. Like it's it, it seems like it makes sense. At this point, even if it's not great, even if it's just enough, it's really all you need. Or you can make your own road movie. So what is and I I didn't know gravitational acceleration could cause videos being deleted from SD cards. But what? So there's there's a there's a thing about this item built in G sensor can automatically protect the video from being deleted caused by gravitational acceleration in an accident. What is Skip protection on your CD player, man. Like, what do you got? Three seconds? Five? I got 20. Wait, wait. Is that something I should be taking with? Like, Sony. Like, should I be worried about my SD cards when my plane takes off? But, I, but like, they don't talk about that. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of Hydra this. Hydra Energon cubes, man. Gravitational <laughs> acceleration is coming to wipe them out. What's Jeez. And what kind of accident would do that? But I think about, like, a GoPro, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like GoPros get thrown around, knocked around, imagine, run over by Baja a, SAE cars. I mean, <laughs> right? Like, and you like, there's nothing on the GoPro box that says this sprayed, has <laughs> sprayed on by water when I didn't have the waterproofing on yeah. it for four hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Covered with mud. This is protected by G sensor. <laughs> exactly. I, I think. I think. Like, is this a gimmick or is this a real thing? Does it say genuine right next to it? <laughs> That in the market, there's no trademark on the G sensor. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, the yeah, brand toothbrush. The one that I found. <laughs> now, the one I got was like Scorch, Scosh. Uh, it's one of those car brands that you like. They have everything, like mm. audio and everything, right? Um, this one, the brand for the one that I, I did put in the notes was 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 amazing for less, all one word. <laughs> not with the number four they actually spelled out four in this one wasn't so, taken yet that's awesome no but um you know for safety's sake it seems like something that might be worthwhile for uh a lot of people out there it, it's super cheap because i always kind of consider it. i'm like i probably have to spend like 100 bucks for it right not the case like well, under 50 bucks for and bringing that back so. around to smart tech um in addition to like you know being here in pittsburgh we have the driverless uber cars that are being mm-hmm. tested i wonder how they're doing this weekend <laughs> yeah that's Everybody, why they wanted to come here where so you they at, could see guys? the four seasons black diamond baby where you at i don't see you on the roads yeah and so they're collecting all that data with sensors and cameras but the um part of what they're also doing with just the cameras now is they're using the cameras to drive around the city and detect where maybe a road sign should be right or maybe a pothole starting to form or whatever so um, just like your Google Maps camera is like taking that all in picture of wherever it's driving, uh, these cars are actually basically gathering data about the city infrastructure. So you're seeing these dash cams or, you know, wherever the thing is mounted, actually helping the city, which would be great for clearing the snow off the roads, right? <laughs> uh, preemptively figure out where the problems are. So, you know, if, if we uh, need more dash cams for us to get this snow cleared, Sorg has the link, uh, City of Pittsburgh. It's uh, nine ninety or no, twelve ninety nine. Mm-hmm, we'll mm-hmm. get this thing cleared up, and you can get two years of protection for two dollars with zero dollars. <laughs> zero de- in case you zero dollar about deductible that. care plan. <laughs> in case in case that Z first protection doesn't um, uh, protect you and your investment. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dash cams, um, man. I mean, yeah, I, I wish I had a dash cam for some of the crazy stuff I've seen driving. But Ryan Haggerty, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me in your warm and cozy and dry and uh, pizza-filled studio. Yes, of course. Of course, Ryan, I uh, uh, work with him on uh, several projects. We uh, relatively recently did things like Handmade Arcade. Uh, Brian from last week was a part of as well. A lot of usually behind the camera, of course. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to plug? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, duck game for life. That's all I have to oh, say. Really, no. duck game for life. <laughs> duck game for life. Haggerty Media, of course. Blood on the leaves. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we are. It's it's funny. Uh, Blood on the leaves is being played up in Dubois this Friday. So if you're in Clearfield, Dubois, and you can drive through the snow and get out of your house, you should come down to the Wrights Theater and see it. There you go. That's the area where a lot of it was filmed, right? Yeah, yeah. We were up in west western Pennsylvania in uh, October, and it was actually a warm October. Um, that very year, lucky, so. very lucky that year for that. Yeah. John Chichilla, he's Chilla on the Twitter, ChillaTech.net. All your gadget needs. And, and now, I'm gonna, now I really want to go download this Pluto TV. So that's I'm gonna really check this out. He's gonna be watching 75 plus channels. 75 plus. I thought that's at 100 plus. Well, I think it depends. And this is the weird thing. So there's all these different channel guides depending on which version of the app you're using. <laughs> really? On which, on which connected device? That's uh, weird. Well, I mean, that makes sense because I mean, they, they probably have like, oh, you can only watch the Nerdist on. Well, I think it has to do with streaming rights. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like with the, you know, back when it's like, why can't I watch Hulu on? A device, you know, like like a certain programs like Bird Notice wouldn't work on, on the app, but mm-hmm. you could watch it in a browser for some reason. Yeah, there's probably a lot of that too. Because they again, they have very real networks on there too. Yes. Oh, you have, gonna, you have messages. I have messages that everybody's seeing. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's only for them in here. Uh, and of course, check out everything awesomecast.com, sorgatronmedia.com for all of the 
podcasting goodiness. We'll see if there's any more streaming things this week because the weather keeps canceling them. So stay tuned for any updates or anything like that uh, from the Sorgatron Media Twitter feed and Facebook and everything like that. Uh, thank you, everybody, joining us here in the chat room, including Buzzy, including Amanda, Stephen, and more throughout the evening. Brian was in there. Doug Durda, I know he was getting ready to... to to shovel snow no no he was getting ready to just <laughs> nestle in and 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 watch his uh awesome cast on his chromecast tonight uh and staying away from that dormant snow so uh what you need to drive through after this <laughs> so <laughs> well, the good thing is it looks like it's kind of stopped out there which doesn't matter to any of you guys on the podcast tomorrow but anyways thank you so much everybody for joining us thanks to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.